Hi Matrix, today we are going to be looking at the endocrine system which is on page 179 in the textbook. This system complements the nervous system in that the nervous system is responsible for physical coordination whereas the endocrine system is responsible for chemical coordination. Now in particular the nervous system uses electrical impulses in order to coordinate systems. The endocrine system is going to use hormones. Now you are going to need to be able to define what a hormone is. Um, and in particular, most hormones are made out of protein. Some of them are steroidal. And they are secreted by an endocrine gland. And they are transported around the body via the bloodstream. These are then transported through the bloodstream and they have some kind of metabolic regulatory function. You are also going to be um, asked to identify different glands and their location in the body. And so let's quickly go through some of them. There is a diagram on page 179 of where the endocrine glands are located. And we're going to start off first with the pituitary gland. Now, the pituitary gland is also known as the master gland. Um, it does have another name, and it may also appear in your textbook as the hypophysis. I would like you to know both names, simply because in previous final exams, the examiners have asked um, a question with the word hypophysis, assuming that you know that that is the pituitary gland. The next gland I'd like to point out, which has been omitted in my diagram here on the screen, is the hypothalamus, and it just sits just above the pituitary gland. We then have the thyroid, the adrenal gland, which is closely associated with the kidneys, which we have gone through before. We have the pancreas, which is something we've covered as well um, in digestion and insulin. And then we have the gonads, which are the testes and the ovaries, which we've also covered in our human reproduction. And what's great about this topic is we are coming into this topic with a lot of prior knowledge, um, in particular from previous topics that we've completed already. Now, there are a large number of hormones in the human body as you can see, and we're going to focus in on some of the most important ones that are most relevant to our topic today. But before we do that, we just need to quickly clarify what is the difference between an exocrine gland and an endocrine gland. And effectively, their prefix gives us a clue as to what the main difference is. Now, exocrine glands are um, glands that have a duct, and a duct is a specialized tube that will transport the substance um, from where it's made to its target. Endocrine glands, on the other hand, are glands that secrete their hormones directly into the bloodstream. Now, you will need to know the difference between these two glands, so please make a note of it. So let's move into the very first gland um, that we are going to cover, which is the hypothalamus. Now, the hypothalamus is located within the brain, um, and it sits just above the pituitary gland. Now, the hypothalamus is very closely associated with the pituitary gland, and they actually do work um, with one another as partners in controlling um, your hormone levels. But we need to focus in on specific hormones for each specific gland and what are the functions. And for the hypothalamus, it is um, known for the production of ADH. And we know from our previous lessons in grade 11 on the kidney that ADH is antidiuretic hormone and it's associated with conserving um, the water in the body. So let's say, for example, um, the person um, in question is sweating a lot and they are losing water and we now need to conserve water, then ADH will be produced, secreted, and we can be brought back to our homeostatic level or our set point. And so we just have a quick look at the diagram um, on the right-hand side. You will see that the hypothalamus produces ADH, antidiuretic hormone, that then moves through the pituitary, and it just, um, to clarify, this is always a big confusion, 
Um, yet again, the hypothalamus and the pituitary, they sort of work together. Um, one relies on the other for instruction. Um, but just for this clarity of this example, I'm going to leave out the pituitary and just focus on the hypothalamus secreting ADH and then that going straight into the circulatory system. So the hypothalamus produces antidiuretic hormone. It is then circulated um, through the bloodstream and it is sent in particular to the kidneys. And that is where, if you remember, we make the tubules um, more dilated, we make them more porous so that more water can enter the bloodstream again. And that then means that our water reserves increase um, and this will produce concentrated urine. The next um, gland that I want to cover is the pituitary gland. Now the pituitary gland is effectively what we would call the chemical coordinator of all the glands. In essence, it is coordinating any information it's receiving from the body and then getting the effector organs and the effector glands to respond in a certain way. And there are a number of hormones that we have to be familiar with. We need to be familiar with um, thyroid stimulation, which we will cover in depth in another video. Um, we are all already familiar with FSH, follicle stimulating hormone, as well as luteinizing hormone. A new hormone that we are maybe not familiar with yet is prolactin, which is associated with lactation. We need to know uh, ACTH, which is closely associated with your um, adrenal cortex. We also need to know the interstitial cell stimulating hormone, which isn't on this picture, but if you remember, that's the hormone that stimulates the testes to secrete testosterone. And finally, we need to know human growth hormone. Now, because the pituitary gland is responsible for so many important structures and growth um, regions in the body, there are a number of growth disorders that can occur. And depending on whether or not there is something wrong with the pituitary gland before um, puberty or after puberty will determine um, what kind of disorder you have. Now, if you have any disorder with your um, pituitary gland before you go through puberty, which obviously happens in um, when you're an adolescent and you are a child, you can either go through hypersecretion or hyposecretion. Now, if you go through hypersecretion, it means that you perhaps produce too much growth hormone. Um, it can result uh, in you having a disorder that is known as uh, giantism. On the other side of hypersecretion, we get hyposecretion, which is linked to a condition called pituitary dwarfism. And to clarify, pituitary dwarfism is different to something called achondroplasia. So pituitary dwarfism is when someone has very little growth hormone and that then means that all their organs, their bones and their muscles remain quite small and um, even though they might be 17 or 18 years old, they might only be um, a few, um, perhaps 60 to 70 centimeters tall. They're very small um, humans that have um, pituitary dwarfism. Whereas achondroplasia, which is another kind of dwarfism, um, which some people might be more familiar with, is when the arms and legs... Um, in particular, are shorter than the torso and the head. Um, effectively, that is due to a genetic disorder where the cartilage um, between the bones um, has not um, grown correctly, and in particular, the legs um, and the arms, uh, the long bones in the body, um, don't successfully elongate, bringing them to a standard height. 
Now, I know the list of hormones seems very long on page 180, but the good news is we are familiar with the majority of these, and this is effectively revision over what we already know, other than, um, I would say, three of them being somewhat new to you, the rest of them are very um, well-known hormones. Um Please use your guideline to just uh, guide you through this topic as well. Make sure that you keep referring it to it the whole way through this um, section.